Welcome to lecture five using the bool data type. So if you remember, we already took a look at the bool data type. We looked at creating a variable type bool and what a bool can actually hold. If you remember, a bool can only hold a true or false value. Um, they can't hold anything else. It can't hold a number or text. It can only hold true or false. So for example, an example of a variable of a bool would be bool my bool equals true. This is perfect. My bool is holding the value true. However, I couldn't say bool my bool 2 equals 5 because a 5 can't be stored inside of a bool. So we cannot do that. Now, bools are extremely important in programming. Almost everything is either a true or a false value. I mean, essentially, computers only understand binary which is just ones and zeros, and ones and zeros either on or off, or true or false. Um, so true and false is basically everything. Um, so whatever the value of a bool is, it can only be a true or false, but that doesn't necessarily mean that I had to type in true or false. Anything that evaluates to a true or false value can be put into a bool variable. So it doesn't necessarily have to be true or false. For example, if I asked you the question, are you 10 years old? There is only two possible answers to this question. Either yes, I am 10 years old, or no, I am not 10 years old. Notice how there's only two answers, either true or false. Either the if statement evaluates a true or evaluates a false. So asking something for equality is one thing that evaluates to a true or false value. Some other things that evaluate to true or false are less than, less than and equal to, greater than, greater than equal to. Think about it. If I said, are you greater than or equal to 10 years old? You either can be yes or no. There's no other answers to, to solve that problem. So bools can be, the value of a bool variable can be determined by basically asking questions like that. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing in the next section. Um, but for now, we're just basically assigning, getting the, the values of these questions and putting them into bools. So in programming, the things that can answer the, or ask those questions or get true and false values as a response are comparison operators. So our comparison operators that we can use are, I'll put them in a comment, are greater than, greater than, or equal to. Notice how greater than and equal to is combined together less than less than or equal to so these all return so far either a true or false value um, we also have is equal to for for checking exact equality we use the double equal sign the reason why we use a double equal sign is because the single equal sign is for assignments this is already used for assignments so the double equal sign will basically check for equality a lot of beginner programmers get this confused with the assignment operator. They think that you can assign a value with it, but no, it is just checking for equality. It will only return either a true or false value. That is it. It will not do an assignment. And the last thing that we can check for is not equal to. And how we say not equal to in, in programming is that we say exclamation point equal. This means not equal to. So this is equal to and is not equal to. So. If I will create another bool, say bool my bool two, I'm gonna try using the greater than. So I'm gonna say my bool two equals is is equal to five greater than six. Notice how I did not explicitly say true or false, but rather I'm using an operator that basically returns or evaluates to a true or false because this can either be true or false. So is 5 greater than 6? No, 5 is not greater than 6, so this operator will return a false, and that, fa that false can be stored into a bool because a bool can hold true or false values. So I'm going to say console.writeline my bool2, and we should see false. So that's telling us that that statement, 5 greater than 6, is a false statement because that is not true. So let's just use some of the other operators. Um, so let's say we change my bool two to um, let's say my bool two equals now. We'll overwrite the value. So 
instead of creating a new variable, I'm just going to overwrite the value. So now, okay, let's check for um, 5 greater than or equal to 6. Now, this is once again is false again if I print that. Because 5 is not greater than or equal to 6. What if I did 6 greater than or equal to 6? Is this true or false? Well, it is true because 6 is greater than or equal to 6. If I remove that equal sign and just do greater again, we'll see that now it says false. So the greater than or equal to is what that says there. We all can, we can do less than or equal to, which this is also true in this case. So we see true also. Um, we also can do is equal to, which ironically, this is also true. 6 is equal to 6. So if I run that, we'll see that 6 equals 6 is true. But if I change it to not equal, this is going to return false now because 6 is not equal to 6. Well, no, 6 is equal to 6, so that is false. So you can see it prints false. Um, so I'm just changing the value of my bool 2 because remember, I'm trying to emphasize that my bool 2 is a variable. Its value can change at any time. I'm not restating the word bool because I'm not creating a new variable. I'm using the same exact storage location. I'm just changing the value of it. Um, so those, these are the basic um, comparison operators that return a true or false value, and we will use them all the time in the following section. So if you, if you do not understand this now, do not worry because we'll be using it all the time. So just to show you quickly before I end this lecture, uh, a maybe, maybe more practical example of using these bools with maybe more context, which we will see a lot more in the next section, is asking a question like this. Let's say I had a variable called int hours worked. Let's say we'll just set it equal to 25 for now. So we have a variable int hours work. And I want to see, okay, should this person get paid overtime or not? So we can do that check with the bool. So I'm going to say bool does employee get overtime. So the name of my variable is does employee get overtime. That's my identifier. And I'm saying equals hours worked is greater than 40. So what's happening here is I'm using a variable. I'm saying if hours worked, which is just an integer, it's the same thing as saying 5 or 25. It's just an integer variable right there that I, de that I defined. So I'm saying if hours worked is greater than 40, if it is, then bool will be true, else bool will be false. So if I do a console dot right line saying, um, does employee get overtime? Question mark, and I put in a placeholder, and now I'm going to plug in my variable does employee get overtime. So this will say true or false depending on how many hours worked. So 25 is 25 greater than 40. That's what's going to be getting checked. So if that was true, this would say true. If it's false, it's going to say false. And as you can see, does employee get overtime? False. The our employee does not get overtime because he only worked 25 hours. You have to work over 40 hours to get overtime. If I change this to 40 hours, what do you think it's going to say? Once again, it still says false because 40 is not greater than 40. You have to work over 40 hours, so that would be 41 hours. And now it says, does employee get overtime? True. Our employee gets overtime. So basically, this is a basic introduction to what we're going to see in the next section when we start working with if statements that we could basically make our program think on its own. We'll be able to make our program say, you know, if our employee does get overtime, then do something else or, or and things like that. So this is just the intro of that bools are basically the backbone of being able to check for true and false comparisons greater than not equal to. That's where we use bools. So that's what this is all about. Okay. So that is it for this lecture. In the next lecture, we'll be, we'll be looking at the character data type and just talking about a little bit more of how we can create them, what can be put into them, and we'll look at um, escape characters and what that's all about.